Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Eddie Marcus, and I'm back again. Spokesman and advocate of basic human rights for all people. This is your right to live on this earth, your right to survive, and your right to live as if you're in heaven. This is the campaign for which I've been traveling for 40 some years, and I'm seeking to be the senator from the state of Minnesota, and in 2020, the president of the United States, for the purpose of making the kinds of necessary changes that you, the people, will be instrumental in accepting and doing what you are required to do to make this a beautiful nation. You know, some people ask me, Eddie, <clears throat> why are you always trying to interject God into your campaign? Why are you talking about God all the time? This is America, and you know we've taken God out of the schools, and we're not really concerned about God. And I tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, that is the very reason why I interject God into my campaign. I'm a social scientist, and I've studied people everywhere. And I found out that people really don't care that much about people unless they're given reasons to. And we have been given a lot of reasons. You see, when it comes down to God, he's different. The spirit of God is different than humankind. Humankind seems to be absent that spirit. And it just drives the whole world wild. Can you think about it? I mean, can you really think about it? I've seen white people treat black people like dirt. Really, I've seen white people treat black people like dirt, slaves, and other people like dirt, slaves. I've seen black people treat black people cold, like dirt. I've seen black people treat white people cold like dirt. I've seen other people treat other people cold like dirt. And what I recognize, ladies and gentlemen, that since we are all human and we all require the same essentials for survival, I know each of us want peace in our lives. We want prosperity in our lives. We want happiness in our lives, every last one of us. And the white man that hates white and blacks and everybody else and loving money, which is a substitute for God. I know that black people who feel the same, and I know that other people who feel the same will never be able to come up with a plan that would offer the peace and the prosperity and the happiness that we all so desire. And when I think back, I reflect on one thing that I've ever heard in my life, one thing that I've ever heard in my upbringing that I could refer to that offered that kind of love, that offered that kind of compassion, and that was God. And since we all want that, and since I've witnessed my whole life that being absent, then I have no other choice but to go back and refer to God. And it is a very simple matter because in order for these things to happen, it says that we must treat each other like we want to be treated. And that seems like great. I know I want to be treated fantastic. I know you want to be treated fantastic. And so if we treat each other fantastic, how much better can we get? You see, there are so many things when you leave that out that is happening. People suffer. Today, you talk about technology that's going to be replacing so many people in the workplace. For instance, if you go to your supermarket, they get uh, checkout counters that don't even require people. They got new technology where you can call someone and they don't need a human being there to answer you. They got a machine. And the way man thinks, this means that you won't have a job. But at the same time, they expect to get as much out of you as they possibly can. And that's suffering. But in God's way of influencing, it says that all technology comes from God. And if it is there in order to eliminate some of the positions it is also there to free people from those positions so that they may engage themselves in other parts of life that gives them all more happiness and more joy and more peace. And so this is why, ladies and gentlemen, that I advocate and bring God into my campaign because I want to see every, every Minnesotan, black, white, young, old, Mexican, whatever you are, receiving an expression of that love. And I want to see everybody in the United States receiving an expression of that love. You see, when we leave God out, we do like Donald Trump. We stand up and boldly tell people what they better do. 
or we're going to punish them. We're going to make them suffer. People are already suffering. We don't need nations to put sanctions on people to cause them suffering. What we need is a free society, a society where people are happy, a society where the pe world can look at us and say, what a golden light that is. And we want to be like that. And they reach out. They don't have to reach out for because we are extending a helping hand, a glorious helping hand, to show them that the love we have is a love they can surely get. And that is the love of God. They're saying everything belongs to God. Everything. Somewhere I heard that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell therein. I've also heard if you seek God first, then all of the things that you desire is right there for your taking. And it's all a spiritual thing. It all comes through the heart and through the mind. All we have to do is have ourselves receptive to what God is doing. And ladies and gentlemen, I believe I'm one of those guys that's out there that do it. I know I'm wise enough to know that I'm not the only one, but I am one. And I want you to know that I am one. And I don't just speak to you about a God that I heard about, a God that I saw others talk about or I read about. I'm speaking to you about a God that has the evidence. I walk on this earth every day. I have the evidence. I am existing. I have the evidence. And there have been situations where the miracles were there to let me know that God is still alive. And it is because of those miracles and that understanding that I come before you today and every day and say that the peace, the prosperity, the joy that you want in your lives must come from God. It must come from God, not from me. I'm just a messenger to say to you that God does not require you to plant a $1,000 seed to get something from God. God needs you to change your heart. God needs you to be pure about the things of life. And if you are, your eyes will be open, your heart will be open, your mind will be open, and you can see God as boldly as you can see anything. And you will want to walk in the walk of life. Because in so doing, you are eliminating the poverty and the crime and the violence and the lying and the cheating and the terrorism and the wars. That is so imminent in our society today. And it would appear to me that with all of the things and all of the wants that you have, you should be willing to give God a chance. Those of you who go to church by the millions, you should be willing to give God a chance. I know you think that going to church, sitting up in the pew, listening to a man tell you Bible stories and you sing and you give your tithes and offering, think that's service to God. That is not service to God. That is service to that preacher. Service to God is treating human beings the way you want to be treated. When you give, my friends, your tithes and offerings to the church, who does it really help? It blesses that man. He tells you that give God your gifts. Who gets those gifts? He does. When you need gifts, he asks you to pray. No, my friends, you have to start doing one for the other, the same thing as you do for that preacher. And you will see that you don't need money. You don't need debt. You don't need taxes. You don't need fees. You don't need any of that. That is a part of the con. And ladies and gentlemen, I've told you this a thousand times. And this morning, I just wanted to answer the question. Why, Eddie, do you want to interject God into your campaign, into your program? Because that's the only way I can see that this thing can work. And this thing is about you. It is about me. It is about all of us, the human race. And God loves us, God made us, and God will protect us when we realize that it is not Trump. It is not the Republicans or the Democrats. It is not the Americans or the Russians or the Chinese or, or anyone. It is the love of God. And I want to thank you so very much, ladies and gentlemen, for giving me this your time. It has been a beautiful time. Until next time, bye-bye.